In this video, I'll share five of my favorite examples of one-time only counter melodies, all occurring near the end of a movement, mostly in the recapitulation section or in the coda. When I say counter melody, I just mean a second melody played as counterpoint simultaneously with the original melody or theme. To better explain this strangely specific topic for a video, I'll jump right to the first example from Mozart's masterful G minor piano quartet that begins with this assertive opening theme. After the expected modulation to the relative major, a variant of this same opening theme now enters in the new key of B-flat major. This begins an extended, complex B-flat major section, based on this opening theme. So at this point, it seems like Mozart is opting for the more Haydn-esque, monothematic sonata form. But, after this B-flat major cadence, we do finally hear a new theme in B-flat major. Actually, one of my favorite Mozart themes, in part due to this quirky, confusing sforzato syncopation. And notice that this leads immediately to a third distinct theme, played by the violin. Jumping straight to the moment of interest in the recapitulation section, the portion we just heard returns, now as expected in the original tonic key of G minor. However, when the pianist repeats the phrase of this quirky second theme, the violin suddenly joins in with this new counter melody, the only time it occurs in the entire piece. My second example is from the finale of Haydn's 91st symphony, which opens with possibly his most cheerful tune among the thousands of stereotypically cheerful tunes in his output. I specifically love these silly grace notes, a hilarious example of the unapologetic whimsy that makes Haydn one of my favorite composers. After the expected modulation to the dominant key, the same opening theme reappears, but now with imitative counterpoint, a common strategy in Haydn's monothematic sonata forms that loyal fans of this channel should definitely know about by now. moment of interest occurs when this imitative version of the theme returns in the recapitulation section, and the first violins add a third layer to this counterpoint, with this equally whimsical countermelody that only occurs this one time. <laughs>
For more insights into this finale, make sure you consult its Wikipedia entry. Spoiler alert, it opens quietly and builds gradually to a close. Moving on, my favorite example of this phenomenon in Beethoven's music is from the famous first movement of his Waldstein Sonata, which opens with this iconic C major theme that emerges from what at first seems to be just repeated accompanimental chords. Also notice the repeat of the theme immediately in B flat major with no modulation. Jumping straight to the coda section, this opening theme now suddenly appears in D-flat major, and eventually, in the process of returning to C major, the theme enters again, but played only by the left hand, while the right hand plays this completely new syncopated countermelody that only ever appears this one time in the coda. Next example is from the finale of Mozart's K428 string quartet, one of the six he dedicated to Haydn, that opens with this humorous theme. When this theme returns for the last time in the coda section, the first violin suddenly plays this completely new, amusing countermelody, while the second violin continues with the original theme. I saved my favorite example for last, from the gorgeous Andante second movement of Haydn's Opus 64 No. 6 string quartet, that begins with this metrically ambiguous theme, meaning that without having the score in front of you, it's easy to hear this initial repeating pattern as 6-8 compound duple meter instead of the actual 3-4. Notice that the initial bar of this theme becomes its own imitative accompaniment, and especially remember that when the theme repeats, it's still played by the first violin, but now with slightly richer harmonies. I'll also play the second half of this opening section, beginning with this dominant pedal point played by the cello. And as you listen, notice how saturated this theme is with non-chord tones, many of them chromatic.
because of the stunning chromaticism we just heard, this theme reminds me of the similarly sublime second movement of the Mozart Quartet we just heard in the last example, K428, composed and famously presented to Haydn himself around eight years before Haydn published the Opus 64 Quartets. Notice the same prominence of chromatic non-chord tones in Mozart's moving cello line while the violins play suspensions, and the dazzling imitative figures including these same suspensions played by the viola and violins when the cello partially repeats the phrase. Returning to Haydn, after an agitated contrasting middle section in the minor mode, the opening theme returns at first as a literal repeat, but the second time the second violin plays the theme, while the first violin enters with this new gorgeous one-time only counter theme, one of the most transcendent moments in Haydn's output. I'll now play this breathtaking moment and the remainder of the movement to end this video. <laughs> 